Hello all and welcome back to our series, Stradivarius and Beyond, Old Italian Violin Makers Untold Stories. I am Luan Amorim and today we are taking a deep dive into the lineage spanning five generations, the Galliano family. Let's talk about the preeminent position in the history of violin making in Naples and the legacy of their remarkable violins in the city that earned the title of the world capital of music in that period. Naples, a cultural epicenter celebrated for its musical legacy, blossomed into a vibrant hub for violin making during the 17th and 19th centuries. Central to this musical renaissance were the esteemed members of the Galliano family. Naples boasted a rich musical heritage that permeated every aspect of daily life. Music wasn't confined to grand palaces or sacred spaces. It thrived into the city's bustling streets and lively taverns. Festivals and celebrations turned Naples into a vibrant stage with parades and concerts captivating crowns on major holidays. Alongside Rome, Naples was acclaimed as a capital of the Baroque era, flourishing culturally and economically from the Middle Ages to the 18th century. Local composers like Alessandro Scarlatti paved the way for early operas, with Naples later becoming the birthplace of opera buffa. The city's cultural richness was reflected in its numerous opera houses, including the iconic Teatro San Carlo, which opened its doors in 1737 and premiered works by renowned composers. Furthermore, the establishment of four prestigious conservatories played a pivotal role in shaping the musical landscape of Naples. Originally conceived as orphanages, these institutions evolved into esteemed musical conservatories that nurtured some of the finest talents in Europe. Despite facing challenges such as epidemics, political unrest during the Italian unification, economic decline and social upheaval, Neapolitan makers persevered, maintaining the craft amidst adversity. The Galliano family's enduring legacy in violin making, spanning nearly two centuries, played a significant role in shaping Naples as a hub for violin production. Starting with Alessandro Galliano, subsequent generations including Niccolo I, Gennaro, Ferdinando, Giuseppe, Giovanni and Antonio continued the tradition, each contributing for the advancement of violin making, further solidifying the Galliano legacy. Extensive documentation from civic archives highlights the Galliano family's preeminence and shows their active involvement in servicing and repairing instruments for prestigious conservatories, indicating their craftsmanship's high quality and reliability. While the Gallianos undoubtedly drew inspiration from renowned contemporaries such as the Stradivari family, they developed a distinctive style that set them apart. Although interactions between the Gallianos and the Stradivaris are speculative, evidence suggests a potential influence particularly in the conceptual realm rather than technical replication. Alessandro Galliano was the head of the Galliano family, the pioneer of violin making in Naples. Little is known about his debut in violin making. Historians and biographers believe that he, traveling north to Cremona, learned from the great masters of that time, such as Niccolo Amati and Antonio Stradivari. Another theory is that Antonio Stradivari's son, Omobono, spent considerable time in Naples around 1700s, coinciding with Alessandro Galliano's period as a maker. While it's likely they crossed paths, there is no concrete evidence to confirm this. Alessandro occasionally labeled his instrument as Alumnus Stradivari, suggesting some association, but it's unlikely that he was a direct student of the Stradivari family given the differences in their work and the much apparent influence of a local early and embryonic violin-making tradition. Alessandro Galliano proved himself to be an excellent judge of wood when the material had to be selected. His instruments are sought after for the excellent tonal quality. The next successor of the Galliano family of violin-makers was Niccolo Galliano I. Like his father, Niccolo had understood how the legendary Amati and Stradivari 
kept themselves apart from the other violin makers of Italy. He and his brother Gennaro produced some of the most in-demand violins of the Galliano family. Niccolo and Gennaro pioneered innovative techniques, including the use of pitch and paper for perfect purfling, which became synonymous with the Galliano family's craftsmanship. In his work, the influence of Cremonese dominance as a standard in the field consolidates within the family's outcome, as we later see a few of his best works being mistaken for that of Amati and Stradivari. These misattributions mean nothing but the excitement stimulated by Niccolo's fine craftsmanship and approach, making his legacy as one of the greatest violin makers in the Galliano lineage undeniably influential. Gennaro Galliano, the maker of this very own violin, renowned as one of the finest luthiers in the family, crafted exceptional violins that surpass expectations. Needless to say, both Gennaro and Niccolo were inclined to craft, absorbing inspiration from Amati and Stradivari. His style did not reflect his father's creativity, instead, he chose to idolize Stradivari. He made violins, adding personal touches and showed clear refinement in terms of texture and color that were softer and richer than those of other violin makers of the family. In terms of varnishing, Niccolo's became a standard in the family's later productions, a font of orange-yellow contrasting with Gennaro's deeper and red-orange shade. The Galliano brothers Giuseppe, Giovanni and Antonio were the sons of Niccolo Galliano. Giuseppe showcased exceptional talent. Antonio frequently collaborated with him, and Giovanni's instruments were relatively scarce. Together with their older brother Ferdinando, they contributed to the family's workshop's rich heritage and consolidated in their work the characteristics that make this school so cohesive and recognized. Ferdinando Galliano stands out as the most prolific member of the third generation. During the late 1700s, the family refined its style, shaping what is now recognized as the Neapolitan school of violin making. While trained in a renowned workshop, Ferdinando's craft was distinct from his brothers. Influenced by his uncle Gennaro, he pursued a somewhat independent path within the family business potentially collaborating with his brothers while maintaining a unique approach to his work. During the Galliano family's era, Naples experienced significant social-political shifts. Ruled by various monarchs like the Spanish Habsburgs and the Bourbon kings, royal courts served as hubs for cultural patronage, fostering opportunities for artisans. Naples also boosted esteemed conservatories that nurtured musicians. The family's proximity to these institutions facilitated interactions with renowned artists. Additionally, Naples' religious and social fabric, dominated by the Catholic Church, influenced artistic teams. As the Galliano family spanned over two centuries, their generations lived through the Baroque to Classic period. We encourage you to explore our other videos from this series Stradivarius and Beyond, delving into the evolving lives of violin makers across each era. A testament to Gennaro Galliano's mastery, this violin embodies his skill and profound understanding of the Cremonese tradition. Rare in its model, it showcases Gennaro's precise craftsmanship, elegant style, and refined varnish. Inspired by the Cremonese tradition, Particularly Amatize techniques, the violin features curved arching, delicate F-hole design, and meticulous detailing. Crafted from high-quality spruce, the top exhibits varied grain, while the back and ribs boast deep flaming. Finishing with a classic orange-brown varnish over a golden ground, this instrument epitomizes Gennaro's artistry and legacy.
Covered with a lovely golden varnish, this Ferdinando Galliano violin presents most of the typical characteristics of the Neapolitan school that was consolidated by his own generation. The curved shape of the peg box, the delicate and small design of the scroll, and the Stradivari model of the body and F-holes, with full but elegant and mute arching. This exquisite example of the maker's work fully embodies his unique style, empty of any discernible impact from his brother Antonio. It is a pure testament to why the instruments made by this lineage of artisans command such esteem. In extraordinary condition, the violin conserves almost entirely its original varnish, thereby bolstering its authentic charm. Crafted by the third generation of the Galliano family, this violin showcases the classic Neapolitan school with fine style. The small, delicate scroll has an elongated peg box shape, flatter arching, and a strong, resolute F holes design. This extremely preserved violin tells the story of how the makers applied the transition to the modern violin between the 18th and 19th centuries. Noteworthy is his exquisite varnish, a hallmark of the school, still pristine and captivating. This violin, like others from the Galliano family, features a significant handwritten inscription on the inner surface of the belly, near the central joint. Even though some letters are hard to read, it appears to reference a religious formula, possibly related to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. While printed labels with religious mottos are common on Galliano family instruments, Handwritten inscriptions like this one are rare, mainly because the Neapolitan violins used to have a somewhat thicker belly, and over the course of the time, the bellies could have been reshaped, making the inscriptions to disappear. The purpose of these religious symbols, whether to fulfill ecclesiastical requirements, imbue their work with sacredness, or express the family's beliefs, remain speculative. The Galliano family dynasty of violin makers eventually came to an end as the 19th century gave way to the 20th century. While the exact circumstances surrounding the conclusion of the dynasty are not widely documented, several factors likely contributed to its decline. Furthermore, social and political disruptions in Naples and Italy during the 19th century may have also contributed. 
The Napoleonic Wars and subsequent unification of Italy brought significant changes to the region, which may have affected the Galliano family's ability to continue their craft. It's also possible that changes within the family, such as the absence of skilled successors or the dispersion of family members, contributed to the dynasty's decline. Spanning generations from the Baroque to the Classical era, the Gallianos left a lasting legacy on the world of violin making. From the vibrant streets of Naples to the grand halls of royal courts, the Gallianos brought music to life with their exquisite instruments, each one a masterpiece of its own. We hope this documentary has deepened your appreciation for this exceptional craftsman. Remember to subscribe and share with others. Thank you very much for watching.